Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we just did a blind head to head between New Riff Barrel Proof and Bellmead Reserve. Which one do we think is the better buy? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. As always, our head to head tastings are completely double blind. We don't know what we're tasting, but you do. That information is in the video description below. You can also see how we do this, why we do this, how we score everything. It's all super simple. We'll walk you through it as we go. Our objective for this tasting here and any tasting that we do is to find out two things. We want an unbiased tasting score, completely blind. And then after we find out what the pours are, we're going to give a real world score based on the price and availability and whether we'd buy it again or not. And all of those things are, of course, based off of what we find out during our blind tastings. This is going to be fun. We're going to run a randomizer and we're going to see which of these 18 pairs we're going to be tasting. This is a portion of our blind sample pool. 12. 12. All right. So nine in the front row, 10, 11, 12. 12. So we are going to get these poured. But before we get these poured, we have a special Patreon shout out to Chris Roop. Chris, like us, is very interested in the whiskey experience and, and trying different things compared back to back. So he did our blind flight thing and, and we're gonna have a lot of fun talking him through all of that. Mm -hmm. But shout out to Chris Root for supporting the channel, Thank you, supporting Chris. this content that we all get to enjoy. And we're going to have a lot of fun doing that with him. We'll clear this off, get these poured, and we'll be right back with our first impressions on glass one. Ooh, this smells sweet as sweet can be. Yeah, it does. Oh my goodness. Super sweet. It smells like pancakes and waffles with butter and syrup. See, I can get some of that syrupy sweetness, but I'm also getting a lot of fruity sweetness out of it. Mm, I think I'm just really hungry and I want pancakes <laughs> and waffles. We are shooting this right before dinner. I haven't so. had dinner yet. I'm starving. We try to do these before dinner so that what we eat doesn't influence our palate. Yeah. But I want pancakes and waffles. Let's just I'm not that. opposed to that. All right. I'm going in. All right. Oh. Mmm. It's spicy. That's nice. It's a little spicy. That's nice. It's got some proof on it. A little bit. It drinks like it's got some proof on it, it at does, least. Yeah. I've been wrong before. You've been wrong before, but <laughs> many it, times. But I agree. It, it drinks like it has proof, whether it does or not. Yeah. It drinks like it. The experience that you get is big flavor, good proof, but not so much that it's just completely knocking you out. It's got a nice oily mouth feel to it, which I really like. That's something that I enjoy personally. The finish is really sweet. It's I pref would prefer it to be heavier on the finish. Like I like that when it's when the finish is really heavy and yeah. kind of spicy. It's this, pretty spicy. It's more spicy on the mid palate, but the spice doesn't really linger. Once it transitions into that finish on the back of the palate, it's just oily mouth coating. It's really good. So that's our first impressions on glass one. Let's get into glass two. Oh, it smells way less sweet off the bat. But again, how it smells is not always how it tastes. Smells kind of like nail polish remover. I'm not getting as much on the nose here. Uh uh. It's more of just the alcohol. I smell. am getting some ethanol, some alcohol. Yeah. Stringency. It smells brighter, but not in a good way. Interesting. All right, let's get into the palette. Okay. Not getting many notes standing mm -hmm. out on the nose. Also, not getting a lot. Oh, wait a minute. For me. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. I like that on the palette. Not initially. Really? These are different. These are different flavor profiles completely. This is more like that fruity sweetness with caramel mm -hmm. in glass one, glass two. I'm getting way more like richer flavors, almost kind of like a nuttiness to it. This is very smooth to me compared to the first one. And I don't know if it's just because it's compared to the first one, if it would stand out as smooth on its own. Not as mouth coating. Ooh. Not, it doesn't have that viscosity that the first glass does. I just got a rocking chair vibe really i don't know i don't know like 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 this is a good whiskey to sip on your no in a like chair? it tastes like a rocking chair smells <laughs> i don't know it just popped into my brain and i just say what pops into well, my brain there you go i mean it definitely has some oak on it like you're always saying like what do you mean when you say oak this is what i mean yeah it smells a little sweeter on the second like, on it doesn't smell as sweet as glass one correct it smells more rich like if if this were candy this would be like a fruity candy, and this would be more like a candy bar. Yeah, I agree. With some chocolate in it. Chocolate, oak, 
That's a that's, rocking chair. <laughs> there you go. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take some time to A-B compare these, clear our palettes out in between, and we'll be right back with those results after this. Our scoring is on a super simple thumbs up, thumbs down system. We grade tasting on three categories, nose, flavor, and experience on the palate. Erin, where are you at on glass one? So overall, my tasting score for glass one is a four out of six possible points two thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, and thumbs up on experience. Okay. How about you? I gave glass one five out of six. Two thumbs up on the nose, two thumbs up on the flavor, thumbs up on the experience. Erin, where are you at for glass two? Glass two got a score of three out of six, which is good. Thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, thumbs up on the experience. Good all around. Yeah. How about you? I gave glass two a four out of six. Thumbs up on the nose, Thumbs up on the flavors, two thumbs up on the experience. Ooh. Very interesting. Ooh la la. So now we're gonna see. So do you have any notes on these? Now that we have our scores out in the open, how close were these for you? How, was it difficult deciding a favorite? Let's answer that first. Was it difficult deciding which one was your favorite? It was because I feel like they're different flavors. Okay. So it was fairly difficult, but for me, the nose opened up on both of them mm -hmm. after I sipped and smelled and sipped and smelled. And then that kind of helped pick up more of a favorite in glass one because yeah. the, the nose on glass one, I kid you not, smells like pancakes, syrup, and bacon. Like yeah. you get a whole breakfast when you smell whatever is in glass one. My and I, freaking love it <laughs> yeah my notes so i completely stole your tasting notes and your, <laughs> your nosing notes i wrote down syrupy pancakes drizzled with caramel sauce and it's, it's a savory nose yeah like I, I said that I, I was getting like a fruity sweetness and there is like an underlying fruity sweetness there but it goes real savory yeah it's really good and i think for me i didn't get that at first but as i compared yeah. the two and kind of smelled and tasted more it Oh, that's all yeah. I taste now, and I really just want breakfast for dinner. <laughs> as far as tasting notes go, all that stuff carried over to the palate. I wrote in all caps, in my zone. Yeah, this <laughs> is in your in zone. In my zone. Yeah. And I said that it had like a candied fruit undertone to the, all that syrupy, like breakfasty sweetness. And then the experience on the palate, I said, was oily and sweet, but it does get a little tame. It's so good in all the ways that I just want more from the finish and it's not quite giving me what I want yeah. in the finish. I can see that. It gets a little tame. And I just, I want it to, to deliver the robustness that those flavors are giving me. Yeah. And I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't as, it didn't taste as sweet as it smelled. Yeah. Because I don't tend to love things that are super sweet yeah. tasting um, in whiskey. I like my candy super sweet, but I don't like my whiskey super sweet. So it smells amazing. It smells sweet, but it doesn't taste as sweet. This is a whiskey that I could just nose and be happy. Yeah. I don't have I mean, to drink it. It's so good on the nose. You have a legit full on breakfast situation going on right here. It's really good. It's not not bad at all. I ain't, I ain't hating on that. We both prefer glass one, yep. but to me, it was easy for me to pick glass one as a favorite but they weren't very far apart. It almost mm -hmm. could be a flip of a coin. Mm -hmm. I just kind of tend to like the flavor profile of glass one a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I did like the nose better on glass one, but I did prefer the experience on glass two more. And this didn't happen while the camera was rolling, but glass two has a finish that just lasts and lasts and lasts. It does. We both commented that yeah. after we kind of sipped and like stopped, it gave us a little bit of a hug, like right here yeah. in like our esophagus area. Like yeah, these are both really good. But yeah, definitely the better finish goes to glass two, the better nose goes to glass one, flavor profiles a flip of the coin. We just both happen to prefer glass one. Which, on is, flavor. which so, is rare that we pick yeah. the same one. This is a like. fascinating matchup. I can't wait to find out what these are. We even remarked off camera, or you did remark off camera, like you're really psyched yeah. about finding what, out what these two are. And normally I don't, particularly care what they are like yeah. i'm just here to have fun and so i'm yeah. i'm super excited to find yeah. out what they it's, are. it's very interesting so, yeah. let's, so let's find out let's find out what they are glass one is number 53 oh, wow. it's an old, late and one. glass two is number 52. okay so 53 i've never heard of this before don't come at me in the comments new riff single barrel barrel proof <laughs> what 
Are you serious? 53 is glass A. Yep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> glass 52, I mean, glass two, number 52, is Bell Mead Reserve Cask Strength. Wow. So I've heard of Bell Mead Reserve before, but I've not heard of New Rev. <laughs> oh my goodness. Talk to me about this. Wow. This is interesting. This is fascinating. So. I have done this single blind, like I've poured both of these things in glasses before and mixed them up and tried them, and I did have a preference towards a New Riff single barrel. Okay. They're both, uh, what was the proof points? Are both like, like around, around 111, 111, 112, which is yeah. funny because- New, New Riff is 112.8 and Bell Mead is 111.4. Yeah. So this is the Bell Mead Reserve, but it's the cash strength before they switched to just the reserve and dropped it down to 108 proof. Okay. So this is wild. New Riff is a new distillery, okay. relatively new, and they're doing their own distillate. A lot of new distilleries source. New Riff's doing their own. It's mm. really good. It's weird. I've gotten like barbecued potato chips on this. That checks out with the savory note. I can't, yeah. If I think about it now, if you think about a bag of Lay's barbecued yeah. chips, I can think, I, that's I where that, that savoriness now, is but coming But like in. the power of suggestion, man. Yeah. Like I didn't get but, potato chips. But honestly, now smelling it, what I thought was barbecue potato chips is definitely way more like that. The syrupy sweetness along with the breadiness of an bacon actual pancake. And, pancakes. and then the bacon. Which wow. Is syrup. That so that's fascinating. Bell Mead Reserve, Nelson Greenbrier Distillery here in Nashville, Tennessee, where we reside, where this home lives, and we live in it. Nash Vegas, baby. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. That's what that. they call it. I mean it's Bachelorette Paradise. I can't believe I just said that. Somebody somebody so, stopped me. <laughs> And this is funny, like these two back to back, I tend to find the new riff more interesting. Yeah. But the finish on the Bell Mead definitely went longer. Mm -hmm. I, we need to get a bottle of the Bell Mead Reserve 108.3 proof or whatever it is and do this comparison again. With the, against the other Bell Mead? Yeah. But for as far as this goes, this is very interesting. Both of these are pretty readily available. Well, I say that, but this is a single barrel single that's barrel. picked and this is a product that no longer exists. and was a cast strength uh, batch. It no longer exists? Yeah, they wanted more profile and more flavor consistency, so they dropped it down to 108 proof. Wow. Well, that's unfortunate. This is, these are both great bottles. These are both great pours. These are the types of I bottles that when people come over to our house and they're bourbon nerds, I know that they haven't tried these. And yeah. I'm like, you gotta try, if you've had Bell Mead, you gotta try this Bell Mead. If you've had New Riff, you gotta try this New Riff. But what are we gonna do when they're gone? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually kind of bummed about that. Yeah. I'm bummed we can't replace them. Yeah. These are both, I mean, these are both really good. Yeah. I'm really happy with these. I mean, they're both, can you check the key? They're both yeah. about $60, $65. New Rift was listed I think the, 50. the new Rift might be 50 or 55 So question, yeah. since this is a single barrel barrel proof pick, obviously this is like a one of a kind situation. So yeah. what else can you get? It's like. You can get new Riff single barrel picks nonstop in a ton of markets. Okay. There's tons of new riff single barrels. Now it is a single barrel. There's going to be variants there. Right. Same as the Bell Mead. Like you're going to get some variants between single barrels or even small batches batch to batch. So to expect the exact same thing out of them isn't necessarily realistic. But with that said, you can expect that you could get something as good as this, if not better. So is it worth spending your money on? You can get bacon, eggs, and pancakes. Only you can be Maybe. the judge if it's worth spending your money on. Yeah. So let's transition into our real world scoring based on that information. Okay. So we take our tasting score and then we add what we call our retail score, which is based on the availability and pricing, mm -hmm. what we think about that. And then our consumer score, whether we would buy it again or not. So Aaron, glass one, where are you at for real world score? So for real world score for glass one, I gave it a seven out of 10. This is like- That's up, a high score for you. It's up there for me. So we should have said this at the top, but think of our scoring for real world and even tasting for that matter, more like a bell curve. Mm -hmm. It's not your typical zero to 10 scale where like you gotta be seven or above to be really good. Mm. If you're scoring seven, you're already really good in our book because on a bell curve, Everything that's between four and six is maybe different, but kind of interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So getting much higher than that is a pretty good score. Yeah. So you gave it a seven. Yeah. 
How does that break down? So taking into account the four points from the tasting score, I gave it two thumbs up on retail score for two points okay. and thumbs up on consumer score for one point, which is total seven points. Wow. I also gave Glass one seven on real world score. Wow. It scored five points for me on tasting score. Yep. And then I gave it thumbs up on retail score and thumbs up on consumer score. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Let's get into glass two. What are your real world scores for glass two? So my real world score for glass two is a five out of 10. That seems low, but that's what it is because it, is. it got one thumb up on the retail, the price, and then one thumb up on consumer score. You add it to the three points it got for the tasting score. Three plus two is five. Yeah. I gave glass two six on real world score. It got four points on tasting score. And then I gave it thumbs up on retail score and thumbs up on consumer score. Most of the time when you hear a zero to 10 scale, you think like you need to be seven or above to be good. Mm -hmm. But think of our scoring more like a bell curve. If you're four to six, you're kind of in that mid point range where most we think most bourbons live, most, bourbons most whiskeys live. live. Yeah. And to get outside of that range, you have to be exceptional in some way. Otherwise, you're kind of interchangeable with the next product that's pretty good as well. So if you can get a seven or above, that's starting to get really, really good in our book. Yeah. I think glass two probably got a little bit hampered from both of us with that $65 price tag. Correct. Whereas glass one, I think scored a little bit better for both of us because of the $50 price $50 tag. $50 price tag, yeah. That's pretty good. I think one of the most interesting things with our scoring is that when you're talking about the the way that the blind tasting informs the way you view the price tag and the way that you view whether you buy it again or not. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times where we've talked about this before, like we might have a bottle that we don't like all that much, but we'll still buy it again because that's our real world opinion of it because mm -hmm. we might want to have it around for guests mm -hmm. because it might be something more limited or rare and we want to have it if guests come over. Mm -hmm. But as far as these two go, I think we can agree like we said, thumbs up on consumer score for both of these products. Yep. If either of these bottles run out, we are going to be searching out another Bellmead Reserve. We're gonna be searching out another New Riff pick. Absolutely. And now that I these. now that I'm aware of New Riff, we honestly need to get another one in our house. Yeah. New Riff's doing big things. All their whiskey is very young, but as it gets older, they're only gonna get better and better. Really cool. I avoided them for the longest time because I didn't really love the way the bottle looks. And I know that's cheesy, but it's very new-ish, okay. it's very modern. And I'm just being honest, like it's the top half is like smoked black and it kind of looks like a black and tan. It just, it wasn't my vibe. A little too much for you? It's a little too much yeah, yeah. for more of a traditionalist like me. Yeah. And now that I've tried it, I really like what they're doing. I've tried a couple of their products. Okay. Typically this range right here. Okay. But I keep saying I'm going to pick up their bottled and bond. I keep saying they're, I'm going to pick up some of their well, special let's releases. Let's do it. Why haven't we done it? We'll do it. I mean, there's only so much bourbon and there's only, or there's, there's only, only so much budget and there's a ton of bourbon out there. Yeah. So, there's, there's only so much budget. Yeah. That's true. We try to stick to that. Who are these for? Are these for you? I mean, I think both of them are for me. I mean, yeah. I, I like things that typically tend to be well-rounded, that don't punch me in the face, but also give me some flavor. And I feel like these both do that in different ways. Yeah. And I have a preference over one than the other, but they're they're both for whiskey intermediaries and like intermediate people. I think that's a great whiskey intermediates. Like yeah. that's a great, like you don't want to venture into these if you're a newbie that hasn't tried anything high proof, right. they're probably gonna rough you up a little bit. A little bit, but and, not, not much if you've had whiskey before. Yeah, and if you're somebody that really prefers high, high proof stuff and you know you're not gonna like something that's on the lower proof end of the spectrum. Which is you. Yeah, but I do enjoy a lower proof pour, but this is kind of like where I like to live mm. for an easy sipper for me. Gotcha. So if you like high proof, these both have big flavor, they don't deliver that super high proof experience, like 20, 120 plus proof stuff, but they definitely deliver on their proof point. Great pours. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I would be very interested. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to put this in our blind pool up against like a Russell's reserve single barrel, which is 110 proof, very close okay. and see how that fares. Cause we both love wild Turkey, Russell's reserve wild Turkey. Mm. 
I have and a it's, better and one. And it's $65. I have a better one for you. What? We need to put this one up against Rare Breed. Oh, well, I mean, Rare Breed and, and Russell's Reserve are kind of a flip of the coin. But Rare but Breed is my current favorite we hang our We hang our hat on Rare Breed around here. I so. love Rare Breed okay. so, so much. There you go. I, I was thinking Russell's because it's a closer proof point. No. But it, it would be interesting to see I'm how this fares against Rare Breed. Just because I want to yeah. know which one I like better because I like them both. Like after I mean, tasting this, it's I told him off camera, like this is comparable in how much I like it to Rare Breed. Yeah, which is a wild thing for her to say. I don't say Those that Those words often. don't come out of her mouth no. about anything ever. Yeah. So this was a ton of fun. If you like blind tastings like this, check the video description below for our Patreon link. It's right down there. We have a couple of tiers with blind tasting kits, sample jars, instructions, scoring rubrics, the whole nine yards. You can do exactly what we just did. Yeah, except with eight different sample jars. Yeah. So it's a ton of fun. We love doing tastings like this. It's so informative because we would never have found out this information. I know. Because we've been clouded by the bottle. You know, it's 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 a ton of fun. Yeah. So we love that. And be sure to check the description below for our next live stream. We do live streams once a month. So check it out down below and see when the next one is. And also thank you so much for watching today's video. We love to do these. We do blind head to heads um, every Thursday, and then we do a video podcast episode every Saturday. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Just one thumbs coordinated up. Coordinated like. I know. Coordinated thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. It, we can only get one point. It's fine. We're cool with it. But at least give us one point. And then hit that subscribe bell. No, the subscribe button and the notification and the bell. bell. Yeah. Yeah. So subscribe to us and then hit that bell to be notified. Every time we post a video, you'll get notified. Till next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to say that. Blah, blah, blah. Unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> <laughs>